Sport climbing will be at the Olympic Games for the first time this summer, and the competition rules and format might seem confusing for newcomers. So to help, we've brought in Olympic judge Paul Lede to explain a few things. Every climber will compete in all three climbing events, lead, speed, and boulder. A lead competition is probably the one that a, a spectator would be most used to thinking of when they're climbing. You've got a climber who's attached to a rope, and they're trying to go as high as they possibly can on a set route. For the lead competition, scoring is determined by how high a climber goes up a 15-meter wall within six minutes. And what the judge will have is a route map that has all of the holds on it, and each hand hold is numbered, typically from one till maybe you know 45 or something like that. As the, uh, the climber goes up, the judge is, is really focused on that climber and making sure that they note when they fell, but not just when they fell, on which hold, but how and what they were doing when they fell. If they just got up to it, let's say hold 33, and they controlled it, and then they slipped off of it, they would get a score of 33. If they got to hold 33, and then they were able to use it to move up and fell off, then they would get something like a 33 plus. The format for the speed competition is pretty straightforward. It's probably the, the most easily accessible viewing competition for, for somebody that's new to the sport and doesn't understand. It's a race. There's a route that's been set, and they're just trying to find the fastest, slickest, quickest you know, way that they can explode up that route. The last discipline is called boulder. A climber has four minutes to climb a boulder, also known as solving a problem, and they have unlimited attempts in those four minutes. They have four problems to solve total. The climbers start on four flashes of tape that serve as a starting line. Their goal is to get to the top hold and control it with two hands. However, even if they don't get to the top, they still have a chance to get points if they make it to areas called zone holds, which are marked with different colored tape. The zone hold is placed by the root setters to separate a stronger climber from a weaker climber. And when we look at our scoring, we look at how many tops do you have? How many zones do you have? How many attempts did it take you to get your tops? And then finally, how many attempts did it take you to get your zones? What makes sport climbing unusual at the Olympics is that all three disciplines are combined for the chance to win one medal, almost like a triathlon. Where you place in the competition is your multiplied rank in each event. For example, if you place second in boulder, first in speed, and fourth in lead, your score would be two times one times four, which is eight. The lower the number, the better. Now that you have the general rules down, here are some common terms you might hear during the broadcast. Flash a root. If you make it to the top in one attempt without having to fall and try again, you flash the root. Beta. That is, any advice or information on how to ascend a route. They'll often refer to the climber using a different beta than what the route setter in intended. So the route setter may have intended this, this particular sequence of movements, but the climber sees it in a completely different way. And so they're going to use a different set of holds to get up that route. So they use a different beta. Crux. That is, the harder parts of a climb. You know, there'll be a crux move typically on a lead climb, or more than one. They'll put a hard move at, you know, around 25. They'll put another hard move at around 40, and another hard move, and those are cruxes. That's where they're expecting that some of the field is going to fail. Crimp. When you listen to somebody talk about the different holds, you'll talk about crimps, uh, which are really tiny ones that you're just getting by millimeters of your fingertips and excruciating pain. Volume, which is a large geometrically shaped feature put on the wall. A volume sometimes has other holds put onto it. What a volume does is give the root setter the opportunity to change the landscape, change the topography of the wall. With a better understanding of the rules and the lingo, now you'll be able to appreciate the athleticism and creativity on display in the Olympic sport climbing competition.